Hey there, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going over this CNC laser engraver that I ended up getting off of Amazon. Uh, it's a 2.5 watt laser. I've had a couple projects come up lately that I could have really used a laser engraver for, so I was on Amazon and I read a couple of the reviews on this laser and it didn't seem too bad. Um, it was coming prime and was going to be here before the weekend, so that was also a plus. I'm going to be taking out of the package here, going over what all the parts and pieces are, and then giving you guys some tips and tricks on how to put it together. Uh, the instructions that came with it here, as you can see, uh, these were actually for like a CB radio or something. So they were not even relevant to what I was building, so I'm not really sure how those got in there, but like I said, they were uh, pretty much useless. So after I ended up getting everything put together, I was checking out the software on the USB drive, and I ended up finding some instructions on there. Uh, all the drawings were pretty much just really vague and... Uh, really hard to understand. So as you can see there, we've got two stepper motors. We have five pieces of extruded aluminum. It's kind of like the 80-20 stuff. Uh, we have a box full of hardware, some motor couplers, gears, different things like that. Um, the power supply, the laser head, and then the actual CNC board that runs the stepper motors. One thing you'll notice about this machine is that it only has one stepper motor for the y-axis. It ends up using a jack shaft with a pulley on the other end to drive both sides. Okay so here like I was saying is the stepper board and the cables that go and plug into it. Uh, you're going to have two cables that are identical. Those are going to be the stepper motor cables, which I'm just putting down there. And then you're going to have a separate cable that's going to go from the board directly to the laser. This kit here comes with pretty much everything you need to assemble it. It comes with the Allen wrenches, the USB cable, the power supply. The only thing that you're going to need is either a really small wrench or a pair of pliers to be able to hold the nuts when you're tightening the screws. The hardest part of this build was sitting here peeling off all this film uh, from these pieces. It just didn't want to come off, but that wasn't too bad. Okay, so you can see here we have five pieces of extrusion, two pieces that are 560 millimeters long, two pieces that are 400 millimeters long, and one piece that is 450 millimeters long. The 450 is going to be for the x-axis carriage to ride along. The two 560 millimeter pieces are going to be for the y-axis carriage to ride along. These are going to be bolted together with the eight L-shaped brackets that come in the kit. Be sure to orientate the framework so that the ends of the two longest pieces of extrusion are open. They have tapped holes in the ends for the four clear feet to bolt onto. Be sure to set the framework on a level surface and then finish tightening down all the brackets and set screws just to make sure everything stays level. Okay, so now I'm bolting the stepper motor for the y-axis to the bracket that's going to connect to the x-axis extrusion. The parts look identical, but as you can see here, one of the brackets has a smaller hole in it. That's for the bearing that holds the jack shaft that goes across. And then the other piece has a larger hole in the center, which is big enough for the motor coupler to go through. When bolting on the stepper motor, you're going to use four short spacers that come in the kit. They should be the only four spacers that have the smallest hole in the center. Next, you're going to put the motor coupler on the shaft about halfway and make sure it's good and tight.
The next step is to install the four bearings that go along with the bolts and the short spacers that have the larger hole in the center. You're going to put on the top two, slip it on the rail, and then install the bottom two. You're going to secure these bolts with the nuts that come in the kit. And when you tighten these up, there are two slots on the bottom bearings that you're going to want to hold upward pressure on while you tighten to take up any slack. Make sure this carriage assembly rides in the rail nice and smooth and doesn't have any binding. The next step is to install the jack shaft here that goes across to the other side of the gantry. Make sure the set screws for the pulleys face inward towards the inside of the machine. Then proceed to install the other side just like you did the first side. Okay, so the next step is to feed the timing belt through the carriage assembly. We're going to go under the bearing, over the pulley, and then under the opposite bearing. We're going to pull the timing belt the whole way to the end of the channel and then we're going to leave about an inch on each side so we have something to grab onto when we try to tension the belt. So now that you have the belt cut to size, you're going to slip in a T-nut over top of the belt and then tighten down the T-nut with the Phillips head screw. Do this on one end and then pull the belt tight on the other and then install the other T-nut along with the Phillips head screw. Do the same exact thing for the other side and then double check to make sure that everything runs smooth. Okay, so do the same exact thing for the x-axis and after you're done doing that, it's going to be time to bolt the laser onto the x-axis gantry. For that, we're going to use the four long skinny screws that you see here. And then we're also going to use four of the long spacers that have the small holes inside. Secure and tighten those screws down with four nuts. Okay, so now we're going to take and bolt the x-axis gantry to the y-axis carriage here. Four Phillips head screws with washers are what secure the extrusion. They are the same exact screws and washers that you use to put the feet on. Okay, the next step is to mount the stepper control board. You're going to take the bracket and use four T-nuts along with four Phillips head screws to secure this bracket. It'll only actually go on and fit one way, so if it's not fitting, you might have to flip it. After that, you're going to take four of the short standoffs, put them through the bracket, and then you're going to put nuts on the back of those. And then the board is going to go on and it gets sandwiched in between the four long standoffs and then after that the clear control cover goes on with four Phillips head screws. Now you can plug in your stepper motors and wires and also the wire that goes to the laser. I use the included spiral wrap to group my wires together just to clean things up. At this point I plugged in the power supply and the USB cable and went to get my laptop. At this point it was time to try out the machine to see if it actually worked. I downloaded the software that was recommended in the user manual and I didn't have any issues downloading it, but the software itself did not seem very good at all. I couldn't get the machine to actually move in the right direction, and everything was being burned backwards. I ended up downloading T2 Laser, and that software worked out a lot better. It just definitely seems like a very well thought out and designed piece of software compared to 
what I downloaded with the machine. It comes with a free trial. I think you get like 30 minutes and 10,000 lines of code. Um, it's only $40, I think, to buy the full version, which I'm definitely going to do. I honestly wouldn't even recommend wasting your time with this software that comes with the machine. I would just download the T2 Laser. It's definitely way more comprehensive. Overall, I'm really happy with the machine. It has plenty of power for what I'm trying to do with it. I find that I have to turn the power down or speed up the feed rate just to keep it from not burning too deep into the wood. So it definitely seems like a really nice piece of equipment for the money. Let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. And if you want to see any more information on the software side of things, uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.